All right, 10 o'clock. So, Martin, what do you say? Should we begin? Yeah, let's yes. start. Okay, then welcome to our online live demo for today. We are happy to have you. Um, as usual, our live demo will be recorded, so I can upload it to YouTube um, afterwards. And the chat is moderated. So if you uh, type something in and it's not shown in the chat window, no worries, I can see it. And uh, we do the Q&A in the end. So let's begin. What can you expect today? Let's have a look at the agenda. So of course, Martin will give us a quick overview what happened this release. Then we will do a deep dive into the live demo of the new features. And then afterwards, we will have a quick outlook because uh, after the release is uh, before the release. And so you can see what you can expect for the next one. And in the end, you can ask us all your questions and we are happy to answer. Great. So I will take over to show you a bit what we have done the last couple of months. So the last three to four months in the release 2022.3. Um, in case you have questions, feel free to type them um, already now in the chat. So you don't need to wait until the end, um, but we will answer them at the end. So what we have done in the last um, release is that we were focusing on following topics. So the first thing is to have a classification excellence. What does it mean? Um, in order to provide you with the good data around classification of the V-hikers in order that you can uh, deliver to your customers and have in your city the perfect um, trustworthy motor split, um, we focused on improving the accuracy of the classification. I will show you in the coming slide a bit more on what was done. But the main focus was definitely on um, on looking that the main classes are detected and classified um, with an accuracy of 95%. But we will see more in the coming slide what was done. Um, an additional point um, where we worked a lot on is the improved monitoring and calibration support. So one of uh, one of the things we are highly dedicated to is to provide a solution which is running stable and easy to work with. So what we have done there is to monitor all our services in the backend in order to provide you a reli with reliable hosting services, but as well in order that you can provide to your customers um, the best and smoothest operation. We have added monitoring services into the front end, into the control center, as well as an alerting mechanism in order that you get alerted in case of in case that some devices are going offline or an issue appears. I will show you more in the demo later. Um, on top, in order to have an easy configuration option, we have added the so-called feature track calibration. Um, this is definitely one uh, really cool point in order to sh help you um, to place the event types for your US use cases in a perfect way and get then the best accuracy output as possible with um, the use case you have configured. Um, one additional point um, is that now we are introducing with this release the multi-role support. What does it mean? The multi-role support is that we have we are introducing three different types of user access rights. Um, it's one time the admin, the user, and the viewer. Um, in the demo, you will see uh, what is the difference between the three of them and um, in terms of authorization, who is allowed to see to do what. As well on the hardware side, we have been working especially on making the P101 and OP101, so our perception boxes more stable. Um, there we have uh, focused really on solving all the issues which were available. Some of you might have realized um, during summer there were some issues. We were able to solve them. All the hardware are adapted and exchanged already on the field. On top, we have been able to um, to have uh, long-term tests on under all conditions. So really from 40 to 45 degrees outdoor in the sun um, to rainy conditions and now already with snow um on the field so these tests are um ongoing and clearly until now everything 
um, works stable. And what we have added is a monitoring on the hardware in order that we are always monitoring temperature, connectivity, uptime, and further topics in order to ensure to have the most stable hardware on your side. Great. So when we have talked about the classification excellence, uh, what have we been doing there? As already mentioned, we focused mainly on the main classes, but we have as well uh, measured our subclasses. So what is the difference between the main classes and subclasses? The main classes are, uh, you can find them in our documentation, but it's the car, truck, bus, motorbike, people, and bicycle. Um, under subclasses, you can uh, the main classes are classified in a more specific way. For example, that the car is split between car and van, or the truck is split between articulated truck, single unit truck, truck with trailer, um, and the bus is the bus. So for bus, there is no subclass in between. So we have achieved for the main classes the 95% accuracy in average. Um, of the classification and for subclasses, we are at 85% um, of the accuracy. Um, on top, in order to have a bit more, uh, bi a bit clearer definition on the subclasses of the trucks, which is one side, the single unit truck, and on the other hand, the articulated truck, we have adapted the definition. Um, as you know, that with visual based, um, we can't go on how heavy they are um, or how many axes they have. So we have found a way in order to make it understandable, as understandable as possible. So that one time the articulated truck, which you can see on the right side here, um, are all the trucks. So these are the large vehicles where the towing vehicle, the yellow one, can be separated from the semi-trailer on the back. On the other hand, it's the single unit truck. So there, the towing vehicle cannot be separated from the semi-trailer. And, and one important thing as well, in case you have an articulated truck, but only the towing vehicle, so no semi-trailer at the end, it will be classified as a single unit truck as it's much smaller um, than expected. Um, this definition can be read in our updated documentation. Um, and one further thing which we have added is the class other. Um, what, what is the class other? So in under all vehicles we are detecting, which cannot be classified in one of the categories of our classes will be classified as others. So definitely, so what are example of these others? It's one time the tractors, but on the other hand as well forklifts or special big construction vehicles. Um, so there are a couple of examples as well listed in the classification. So you can look it up. And this is definitely a good point. For example, if you know you have in an area a lot of tractors, um, you can um, take the others class and say, okay, um, definitely it's 90% out of them are the tractors. So it's more location driven then. Great. So let's jump into the tool in order to see the other features. Yes. Just takes a minute. So now we are back here in the tool. So we start with the multi role support. Um, what we, um, with the multi-role support, as already mentioned, there are three different user access rights. You can see here on the top right that uh, I'm here, the admin. So I have an admin user. What is the admin allowed to do? The admin is really allowed to do everything. So as you were used to do everything in the control center in the past with your standard user, you can do in the, so you can make all the configurations in the device configuration from camera configuration, event type configuration, scenario configuration. Um, on top, you can manage everything in data analytics, create dashboard, create widgets, um, and, and as well view all the data. And on top, um, as an admin, you are allowed to create monitoring alerts. I will show you a bit later. So one of our other new features. 
So if if I change my user now to a, a user, so we I said we have the admin, and the next level is that we have the user access rights. So I will have another account where I'm a user. You can see already that it looks a bit different because you don't have the option of doing the monitoring alerts. So only the admin is allowed to do monitoring alerts. As a user, you're allowed to do everything besides of monitoring alerts. So you can, you can manage all the devices, you can make configurations on the devices, you can um, change any dashboard in data analytics, you can add new dashboards, add new widgets. So you can manage everything which you have been used to managing in the past. Now, as we look more in the viewer direction, so this is maybe the the account with the less user right, uh, so the least user rights. Let me see. Here we have the viewer. So as you can see, as a viewer, you will only be able to see data analytics. So the idea be behind is that I'm, for example, only a viewer, I'm in the city, and I'm only interested in the data. So it's not my responsibility to make any configuration and decide what data is generated, but I'm interested in what data. So what is the motor split of a, of a city? What is the traffic frequency? So you will be able to see all the dashboards. Um, with the different data. But you're not able to create new dashboards, you're not able to change the widgets, so you don't have any control around the data, uh, around what is shown, but you will be able to see it. On top, what you will be able to see as well, what kind of cameras are connected to this dashboard in order to get an overview about which location you're talking. Great, so that's it about the about the multi-role support. Now I will log in myself again as a admin user in order to show you all features. Great. So now we have seen the multi-role support. One, the additional topics we have um, mentioned before is that we have an improved monitoring and alerting of the monitoring. So if you go into device configuration, um, you are already used to the status, the monitoring status we are showing here. Um, uh, only small thing we have done is that we added a warning status. You can find in our documentation what the warning is but we distributed the not running stat status a bit more in order to give you only a warning. For example, if the device is running on a performance limit, it's still generating data, but it could have an impact to the accuracy. So that would be a warning state. Um, and on top, what, what, what is provided as well for everything where you have a not running or warning state, if you go on here, there is an overlay in order to give you an indication about the issue type. So where is the issue coming from? So for example, here connection to camera cannot be established. So there, first thing you could check is, is the camera still connected to the perception box? Is the camera still running? So this would be the first step to check. And clearly, if everything is checked, come back to the support, and we will going to guide you and help you towards um, finding a solution to get it up and running again. Now, as you might have um, several devices, close to 100 devices or, or more in the control center, you will not be able to go through all of them and check the status. That's why we have introduced the monitoring alerts. Um, in the monitoring alerts, you are able to create one or several alerts um, on one or several boxes. And the alerting is sent via email um, towards the list of recipients you will define. So how you create this monitoring alert is that you say, I want to create a new alert. Um, you say, for example, device goes offline. 
and then you choose the condition. So the first step to choose the condition is either you say we have three different conditions that you get alerted. So one is device offline, we trigger if a device is changing the status from online to offline. You have as well the option to choose if a device error. So it will trigger if a stream status of one or more streams on the devices changed from not running, uh, changed to not running from running or warning. So in case the device, uh, the stream was running before and it's not running anymore, um, it will send you an error. And the same with the warning. So in case it was running before and then it changed to a warning state, um, it will trigger um, an alert. You're able to choose one or several um, options of the condition. If you choose several conditions, um, the alert will be triggered if one, so at least one of the conditions um, is going to be uh, is affected. I will choose just one condition now with device offline. You have here the option to choose if you want to get the resolution notification as soon as the problem is resolved. I will keep it for the moment to not get a resolution notification. Then you can choose the devices. So you can choose one or several devices and have as well the option to choose all directly. And then in the next step, you're able to um, create a list of recipients who should get the information. For example, um, I want that myself is getting the information. But for example, but maybe you might you might have a support email address in your company, so you would add, for example, support support at stormanalytics.com. So you can define uh, the list of recipients. There are no limits. You can put one hundred recipients. Um, that's why there is only the admin allowed to create and edit these uh, alerts in order to not um, force any, um, I would say, spamming with our alerting. So choose it wisely. Who will get the alerts? Um, there is no validation from the person needed um, in order that they get the alert. So you can remove the recipient from the alert. I will keep it now that only I will get it. Save the alert. And you see here the, the list of all your alerts. You can change or delete them at any time here at the action buttons. So for changing, just click on the edit pen and it will be the same workflow as the creation workflow. And you can cancel or save in order to change um, the current alert. And for deletion, it's the same. You will be asked again if you're sure that you want to delete the alert, yes or no. The output will be following. I will show you in the documentation quickly how the email will look like. So this is how the output of the email will look at the end. So you will see the alert is triggered at which date, which time, which alert was triggered, which device is affected, um, and what is the reason. So the condition that was, of, um, yeah, why the alert is triggered. And you have as well a direct link to our support portal in order, if in case you need support um, to directly contact us. Right, so that's all around the monitoring alert. Then we have one more feature we can show you. It's the calibration feature. I think this is always one of the most, some, some of you might have seen it already. So we, it was introduced in one of our early, as one of our early availability feature during the last updates. But when you configure a device, for example, here, uh, traffic counting, and you're in the configuration mode, you have different options on the top right drop down in order to support you during the calibration. Because what you need to do is that you need to set the counting line and you need to decide where is the best place to set the counting line. So yes, we have our specifications in the documentation telling you what approximately you should take care of in 
placing an event type, but still each each scenario, each location is special. So it looks always a bit different. Um, and you want to know what is the algorithm detecting in order to set the event type on the perfect location. So for example, with traffic event, if I create a counting line and I want to count this lane on this side, you need to know where are the tracks the most stable in order to count um, the most accurate. So you can choose the track calibration feature. The track calibration feature is taking a, a specific amount of tracks from the past and is overlaying it to, for you on the calibration frame in order that you can see where did my track start and where does it, does it end, for example, here we see the dot is always starting a track and the X is where, where it ends. And you see that especially here in the middle, all the tracks are stable and you can decide, ah, perfect. I would place the counting line on this location. It's much better than, for example, placing it back there. Um, I will have a worse result. I mean, it might be obvious in this, use case, but there are definitely use cases where it's not that obvious and it will support you a lot to have this. So this track calibration was added on top of our live calibration view. Now you would will ask, okay, why do I have both options? The live calibration view is giving you, as it's already says, a live overview about the detections. So you see even the car, what is going to be so the car, what is detected with the center point and the track of all the detections which are still on the frame. So I would suggest you, in case you're calibrating a parking space, so for example, single and multi-space parking, you would use the live calibration because it gives you a, up, um, the overview about the center point, and it's important that the center point is in the region of interest of the parking space. And if you're more configuring um, a traffic use case with a rich in destination or traffic counting, motor split, I would suggest you to use the track calibration if you, as you have more data um, to show um, from the past, okay, where is my detection and classification the most accurate? Now, what I almost forgot is that you see we have different colors here in the tracks and in the detection. There is a, a legend over there where you can see, okay, um, which color is which class. So the colors are distributed by class in order to give you an overview um, how many trucks, buses, um, and cars, as well as with the trucks, you see they go for sure on the same lane, but as the center point, as they are higher, the center point is more on the right. So it gives you the option to say, ah, I need to place the counting light a bit longer than I would have expected. Great. So I think this is complete with the features. And Nina, I would say Correct. that. Well, that you promised we... us um, a quick outlook. So maybe you show us some, some nice uh additional info, and then we head into the questions and answers because I already received some questions here. Good, good point. Um, you reminded me again, as I get reminded after each release, after the release is before the next release. It always makes me happy because we can continue working. Um, so what are we doing in the coming month? So our next release is called the release 2023.1. So it will be the first release in the year 2023. And we are going to launch it in the beginning of March, the official date um, we, we communicate. Um, at the end, what are we focusing on is really on traffic. So we are extending our use cases in traffic. So this is definitely one of a big point um, for anyone using traf um, using our sensors in traffic scenarios is that we are going to extend the use cases towards journey times as well as statistical journeys taken across several locations. So what does it mean that if we have two locations, um, we are going to have a solution to provide you with the information about what is the average journey time between different locations. 
And we want to show you what are statistically the most taken tronies across several locations. So this is what we are going to um, launch in March. Um, and definitely it will be a first launch of the journey time and it's a new feature. We show you, it should make us smarter, the sensor even more smarter for more complex traffic use cases. Um, and yeah, in case you're interested in already to get more information on this one or provide you, um, provide with your traffic engineering input, um, please be free to come back to us. Uh, we are very happy to get any input on, on this feature. Um, on top, in order to support this feature the most, we are improving our models on the AMPR feature. So why AMPR? Because the journey time will be calculated based on uh, um, a privacy conform AMPR recognition. So um, I will not give you too much information now, but it will be a privacy conform, uh, GDPR conform um, journey time evaluation. We will improve the AMPR accuracy in order to have uh, more, yeah, to back up the journey time. And what we will work on is further improving the classification and detection model. As for example, we see that we definitely need to have more improvements in the car and truck with trailers. Um, this is one thing where we will work more on in order to be more trustworthy. And you can expect next year in Q1 or Q2, uh, perception uh, update updated perception box, um, which will provide you uh, with an easy and trustworthy plug and play solution in any infrastructure, plus avoiding issue by customization. So um, I will not say more around this in case you have more detailed question questions on the roadmap. Feel free to ask them now or come back to me uh, after the session, and we will have a closer discussion. Thanks a lot, Martin. <clears throat> Apologies. So I would suggest uh, we we check out the questions we we already received. Uh, let me see. Um, okay, the first one is in regard to our uh, alerting system. So um, uh, do we receive an email if the alert trigger is okay again? Good question. Um, I hope I have shown it, but I will show you quickly <clears throat> yes you have the option if you create the alert you have the option to put the resolution notification which will provide you with an email in case um it have has been resolved perfect thank you so it's both via email perfect yes okay um the next one uh, regarding the anpr module is it foreseen to have also an ANPR based counting line, use case parking, parking duration? <laughs> it's for, it's not even foreseen, it's already available, yes. Um, so um, we have a use case, we call it barrierless parking with ANPR. So it's kind of a, uh, as an input for free flow parking solutions. So you will find it in our documentation and feel free to come back to me and I will show you more in detail. But just quickly, I can even show it now. We have here the parking entry. It's a parking garage at our office. And you can see that for this counting line, I mean, there is a barrier. I said barrierless, but clearly it works as well without barrier. Um, and you have the option to set here, enable or disable AMPR for counting line and even region of interest. So in case you have a single space detection for EV charging, we are able to give you the license plate as well. So for this case, anytime a uh, object is crossing the counting line and the license plate was read, you will get the information of the license plate in the event. And even in data analytics, we are able to show you um, parking times. So we have a parking time widget based on this data, which is already calculating from the exit and entries of a parking space. You can define several exits and entries. So it's already showing you um, the parking time in average historic or even active parking times um, in our data analytics. 
Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, um, I would say multi-role support related. Um, where can the access rights for the different users be changed? <laughs> good, good, good that someone is asking. Um, should have told it already. Uh, so, so this is car currently done by us. So in case you need to change any existing user to another user access right, feel free to create a support ticket. We will do it immediately. And for any new user you're going to create in your control center, you will request it via the controls, uh, via the support portal, and you will tell us um, which user access right the user should get. And it will be done by us. Okay, perfect. Um, next uh, question in this, uh, also the same topic. Um, so is it true that when I am an admin, I'm able to create multiple different viewer and user accounts as much as I like then? As, as already mentioned, at the moment, you will not create users. So the users are created an hour and it has uh, a couple of um, reasons why we are doing it that way mostly yeah i will not go into detail because it's a bit too technical i would say uh but anyway we are doing it for you um okay. but we could think about in the future adding a kind of admin page where you can manage user um so in case that's interesting please let us know and we will evaluate um the options and the effort behind yeah perfect Okay, uh, last question for the moment, as far as I can see. Um, can I integrate the monitoring status in our third-party system, for example, via MQTT? <laughs> good, good, good question. So what is, what is meant by it, I guess? So at the end, we have here the monitoring of a camera. So for example, this running. In case you have your smart city platform and you integrated the data in the smart city platform, you might want to know what is the sensor status. So is it still delivering data? Is still everything up and running? Yes, you're able to integrate this status into third party systems. And no, you're not able to do it via the MQTT message. Why? <laughs> so there, there are two reasons. So with the, you can integrate it via our API. Um, which is taking the information as we take it here in the control center. You can take it from our backend via the API and integrate it in your end. And why can't we tell you in the MQTT message already the monitoring status is because, the mo because for example, if the device goes offline, it will not send any event anymore. So you will never get the information that the device is offline. Um, this is why we are doing this on the cloud uh, and you need to integrate it via the API. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, that was the last question I received and nobody is typing currently. So I think you might have answered all open questions for the moment. But of course, everybody watching, uh, feel free to reach out anytime if you can think of more questions or something might be unclear after the live demo. It's always a lot of information and we all need a moment to process. Um, yeah, so yeah, we have to thank you for your participation and for being here today. Uh, and of course, um, there will be the recording later on. So if you want to share it with your colleagues, uh, instead of um, telling them all the details, then feel free to send out the link and then and one, I, say, I want to add yeah. one thing. You will be asked for Always. feedback around the webin webinar after you leave the session. Feel free to leave us some lines there. Yeah, it would be uh, much appreciated from our side because uh, we can always uh, do it better. Okay, then um, we hope you have a pleasant day, uh, rest of the day, and stay safe and talk to you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.